Good, whatever your time zone is. I hope you're having a good, uh, whatever your time zone is. But enough of the introductions though, because what we've got served on the slice of life today is what I want to talk about today is X. And how if you only look at the big headlines in life, then you'd probably believe that nobody likes Pierre Polyev. And I'm here to tell y'all to not believe in it. It is called the bandwagon effect. If you look at the headlines and you see everyone under it moving in the direction of disliking whatever it is talking about, then you might feel a sense of feeling missed out and want to join them. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna let you know that the article is just an obvious lie. They claim that Pierre lies, but I disagree and would in fact say the reverse of it. And I'm not going to do the liberal thing of using big bloated words to make it seem bigger than it is. I'm rather just going to call liberals a bunch of fools, but let us dive into the article now. Quote, Firstly, we asked him what his party would do to ensure it supports local journalism. His answer, free speech. I'm going to repeal the censorship laws, make it possible for Canadian news to be visible again on Facebook, Instagram, and all other social media platforms, he said and get rid of the terrible censorship laws that have taken those news stories down from the internet and deprived independent local media to have a voice. Okay, let us digest this. There is no such thing as a censorship law. Full stop. We assume he is referring to the Online News Act, Bill C-18, which is aimed to ensure that dominant platforms compensate news businesses when their content is made available on their services. In other words, when big players like Google or Meta share news content created by Canadian media companies and benefits from the billions of views those stories produce, then companies like Google must pay for that privilege. The law is simple, fair, and in the best interest of Canadian journalism organizations, and something Google has agreed to, by the way. The only censorship being done is solely by Meta, which runs Facebook and Instagram. Now, I would go through the whole diatribe that is the Bill C-18 just for the gaps, but I really don't need to because the title of the bill says, quote, Bill C-18, an act respecting online communications platforms that make news content available to persons in Canada. But for some reason, uh, maybe, maybe I'm just too stupid to understand this. But if Google supposedly agreed to making news content available to people in Canada, uh, then maybe you can tell me below, but why couldn't people look up Trump's July 13th situation? I can now, but for the longest time, Meta, Google, and almost every other media conglomerate tried suppressing the event and made it seem like it didn't actually happen. Could it be that censorship exists even <gasps> with the bill? But here, uh, let us do a really quick use of our brains here. If the bill is meant to give fair compensation for views, then what would you call it if Google were to just suppress news coverage that they don't like, which would therefore end up with that news coverage getting less money? Would you not call that a form of censorship? Like, sure, stupid people, the bill doesn't outright call itself a censorship bill, but last I checked, the northern side of Korea still calls itself a republic even though it is not. So that is point number one down. And bear warning, I'm going to be cutting the next point up a bit, so if you want, the article is in the description, you can look at it yourself. Quote, We asked a question about the future of a Local Journalism Initiative, a government-funded program that pays salaries of many journalists across the country. His response? It is terrible how local journalism has done under nine years of Trudeau. He tried to take it over and basically wants everyone to work for the government so that he can have regurgitated propaganda paid for by taxpayers. This is completely false. Okay, great. It is nice to know that you want us to believe that it is a false statement, but why is it false? Well, they go on to talk about how the local journalism initiative, which is government funded, doesn't mean preferential news coverage and how the initiative funds both liberal coverage and conservative coverage. But look, I'm just going to bring up the earlier example of Google. If Trudeau wasn't trying to have a specific voice regurgitated to everyone, 
then why are many things censored and not topics of conversation that are allowed? Is it really that great of a leap in logic to assume that Trudeau would do the same for larger or even smaller media companies? What Pierre said isn't completely false, just with Bill C-18 alone, because the claim is that Trudeau tried to take over local journalism, which he obviously did. Now, I will note this thing that I noticed while reading this. It is that they, Niagara, seem specifically perturbed about being potentially called out for giving preferential treatment towards who is paying them. Could be righteous indignation, or could also just be words used to sway people's opinion from thinking that their opinions are bought for. I'm suspicious of it, but I'll let that come down to personal thought. Now, the next point that they lay out is, quote, Next, we asked him again, point blank, what he plans to do with the LJI program. His answer was that media should be funding itself and do what media has done for, I don't know, about 3,000 years? Simply, we have to ask, how out of touch can a person be when from one side of their mouth they're saying they would repeal laws that give media fair compensation from giants like Google and Meta, and on the other side, he says those organizations should be funding themselves entirely. And once again, the liberal companies do what they do best, and twist words to fit their narrative. Pierre did not say that he is going to repeal laws that give media fair compensation, but rather that he is going to repeal laws that censor people. And here we can even dive even further, because with the recent case between X, Rumble, and Google's advertising, it is obvious that Google gives preferential stuff to people that they like. So look here and do some of that critical thinking that you claim that the conservatives are unable to do. If who I'm working for gives me more money to say a certain thing, uh, give, me, give me a ratio of people who you'd think would rather stand on morals and not say something for more money in comparison to people who'd not stand on morals and just take the extra cash because they've probably got a family to take care of. Like this really isn't a crazy leap of logic that we're doing here. And how can they even include Meta on that list of fair compensation from giants like Google and Meta when earlier they stated that Meta didn't agree with the bill? That math isn't mathing, folks. Though, to continue, because this video definitely isn't already taking too long to edit, which is just going to lead to a sleepless night, right? Uh, anywho, they state, quote, He goes on, And now, of course, media and journalism is stronger than ever today because we have the internet, which allows for more voices to reach Canadians, and that competition is positive. We can't have the government try to shut down competition just to favor those who favor the political viewpoints of Justin Trudeau. Again, there's a lot to unpack here. Firstly, did he just say media and journalism is doing better than ever? We thought he just said how much we're all suffering under Trudeau. Can't this guy make up his mind? He's just pandering again, so don't take anything he says too seriously, people. A real great problem that I have here specifically is that, uh, where this speech comes from and where it led off. Because this portion of the speech is incongruent with the last thing he said from the article. So clearly, we are missing a part of Pierre's speech. And so I really can't make a judgment on this, because there is context that is straight up missing from here. This is so out of left field, and without context to what Pierre was talking about, he could have been referring to X for all we know, which would make complete sense because of X being for free speech. But I guess to go against Niagara's point, I would have to claim that they're pandering. Because they really haven't proven Pierre to pander, lie, and mislead, but rather quite the opposite in comparison to themselves. Pierre called the bill a censorship bill, and Niagara claimed it to be something else and then ran with that claim and put it against Pierre even though Pierre didn't claim that in the beginning. So they're misleading. Let us continue. They claim that Pierre lies 
even though they claim that Pierre is, and I quote, they would repeal laws that give media fair compensation from giants like Google and Meta. And once again, Pierre didn't claim that about the bill. What Pierre claimed is that the bill is a censorship bill. Totally different things and two different claims. So they're lying by acting like Pierre has specifically called out to repeal laws that give fair compensation when the truth is that Pierre has claimed to repeal censorship laws. And look, I could probably spread this video even longer, but the truth is that I have to edit this whole thing and I, so I'm just gonna cut it here because I think you get the point. Liberals will always use their favorite tool, that being projection. They claim that conservatives can't do critical thinking while not critically thinking. And what kind of world is a good one where projection is the norm? Not a good one, to put it short. Liberalism causes all of these problems. Things like projection, lying, and simply put, liberalism causes stupidity. Good news though, there is a simple solution to deal with this silly problem, that being liberalism. And that is to vote conservative. And best yet, is that it doesn't require that much effort to do so. And at least by you doing so, you'd be doing the right thing. And if you agree with that, then hit that like button. And if you want to listen to more daily news, then hit that subscribe button to join an independent conservative piece of YouTube media that talks about stuff going on all over North America. Either way though, I hope to see you tomorrow. But until then, have a good one.